All right, hi. So in this foundational flow, we are going to use a mini band. So you can have one of these looped there bands, or if you have a long there band, you can tie it in a knot. Um, I have a heavier resistance, but I would recommend going a little bit lighter if you've got more of a medium or a light resistance. I would start with that. I just have a heavy one right now and a foam roller. Of course, what we are going to use with the foam roller, you don't necessarily need it. It's just going to add a little extra to the exercises, but you could also just use your body weight for everything today, or you could have a yoga block instead of the foam roller or a little ball that you can put under, underneath your knee. So anyways, these are the two props that we'll be using. In this foundational flow, we're gonna go over some of the basics in mat Pilates. There's so many, so it's hard to get all of those into a short 20 to 25 minute little workout. So today we're gonna go through some stuff standing, and then supine, so laying on your back, looking up towards the ceiling, quadruped, like all fours like a dog, hands and knees, and a little bit of work side lying. And yeah, we're gonna put these props away, put them back here for now, and get started standing. So I do have my little podium of notes. You might see me glancing at it on occasion. I just wanna make sure that I'm remembering everything. So don't mind me. So let's get started standing on your mat. If you don't have a mat, carpet, something that's just gonna give you a little bit of cushion for the standing work, if you have a cushiony mat that's a little thicker, it will increase the balance work. So just a heads up, mine's pretty thin, so it's not gonna make it too hard. So we're gonna start with a good old fashioned Pilates standing roll down. So standing hip distance apart with your feet. So right inside these hip bones, your ASIS. Parallel, toes facing north, heels facing south. Take a nice big breath in through the nose and float your arms up towards the sky. On your exhale, you're gonna cascade down one vertebra at a time, round, really slowly bending those knees a little bit, softening the knees, and just letting my arms and my head and spine hang heavily down towards the ground, like they're just 50 pounds each. Maybe take a little nod, yes, of the neck, of the head, and rotation, no, just freeing up that neck a little bit, yes, no. Quiet the movements in the head. Take a big inhale through your nose. Press down evenly through your feet, balls of the feet and heels, and roll up on your exhale. Feeling the abdominals engage and the glutes to bring you back upright. We're gonna do that again, but add a little rotational stretch. Inhale, float the arms up skyward. Grow nice and tall. Exhale, diving down. Exhale, all your air soft bend in the knees. So from here, keep the left leg straight and generously bend the right knee. Reach the left arm up towards the sky. Let your gaze and your torso rotate that way as well. If this is too deep of a stretch, you can come up forearm onto your thigh. So that's how to modify this. And wherever you are, let's transition. Second side. Bend into the left knee. Straighten into the, into the right leg, getting that deeper hamstring stretch, and twist to the right. Option to come up here, forearm onto that left thigh. I sometimes like doing both, even though I'm able to be here with my hand on the ground. It just gives me a different sensation, different feel of stretch. Let's come back down, take a big inhale, and exhale, super slow roll up, pressing down through your feet even. Restacking your spine one vertebra at a time. Now from here, we're gonna go through a little spinal elixir. So a little combination that's gonna get the spine to move in its four ranges, flexion, extension, side bending, lateral flexion, and rotation. So we'll start, we already did some flexion. So we're gonna go to what I call the ball to extension. So same position with your feet. You're gonna take a big inhale to prepare. Now we put the ball on your exhale, bend your knees, and then bring the backs of the hands to kiss in front of you. That's internally rotating your shoulders. And can you tuck your tailbone under like you're a dog hiding its tail? Become a capital letter C, a big ball with your spine. Huge exhale. Upon your inhale, straighten the legs, spin the palms to face forward, externally rotating shoulders, and open your chest. 
Shining your sternum up towards the ceiling. Let's do that twice more with more flow. Exhale, be a ball. Inhale, stand tall, spin the arms forward. And last one, exhale, ball. Backs of the hands kiss, tuck your tailbone under, scoop the abdominals in. And inhale, grow nice and tall, open your chest. Big upper back extension. Ooh, that always feels so nice. I'm gonna stand this way, new angle. So about hip distance between your feet, or you can go wider if that feels better. We're just gonna do some gentle side bending. Inhale to slide one hand down the same side, thigh. Exhale, find the obliques to bring you up. So inhale through the nose. Exhale, abdominals bring me back upright. Sliding down, coming up. When you're stacking back up, think ribs, shoulder, head come up last. Let your neck side bend as well. One more each way, just waking up our spine. Whatever time of the day it is, always so good to get that mobility. All right, then we're gonna do a little two for one -er. We're gonna do some balancing work with spinal rotation. This is called the tightrope. You can imagine you're on a slack line but there's no safety issue there because we don't have a bar to fall. So for here, I'm gonna stand in the middle of my mat, bring the right foot in front of the left as if I were on a slack line. And I'm gonna hug those inner thighs. They're pressing in towards my midline. So they're, ooh, I'm already falling. They're pressing in towards each other. And then make sure your feet are one in front of the other. Press down through what I call the tripods of your feet, three points of contact. So you've got the ball of the big toe, pinky toe, and heel pressing down through both feet. Your three points of contact, your tripod. That's gonna help you stabilize here as we add some upper body mobility. Arms float to a T, and you're going to twist left and right. You can either choose to let your gaze go with your rotation, with the direction of your rotation, or keep it fixed ahead of you as your torso twists. Just experiment, play around with these options and see what feels best for you. Now, before we switch sides, arms to a T, one big circle with your neck and your gaze, like you're tracing a circle around the room, watching a fly buzz around every corner of it. And reverse your circle, might start to get a little wobbly. A lot of muscles working in your feet and ankles all throughout your body to keep you stable. Now we're gonna do the other side. So step the left foot forward, right foot back. You're on your slack line, same thing as before. Hug your inner thighs together. Let's start with our rotations. Exhale, twist. Inhale, center. Or I always invite people to reverse the breathing. See how it feels to twist on an inhale. Grow taller as you twist like a spiral staircase going up as it gets Higher, it is rotating. One more each way. Arms are going to just stay out to the side. Do your big circle each direction, nice and slowly, looking around the entirety of the room. And reverse, press down through your tripod foot points, hug those inner thighs together, and grow nice and tall. Float those arms down beside you. So we're gonna move on to a little knee bend with calf raise combo. So you're still parallel, knees tracking over the center of your foot, of your feet, and we're just gonna bend and straighten the knees like a little plie. If you've ever done ballet or are familiar with French, plie means to bend. So inhale and exhale. Gentle engagement through the abdominals. Gentle engagement in the glutes, nothing too extreme though. We're gonna add funky little combo to this as you bend the knees simultaneously. Shrug your shoulders up north towards your ears. Unshrug as you straighten. It's a little oompa loompa move, that's what I think of. A little oompa loompa do 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 do. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. But inhale and exhale, side angle. You don't have to move, but bend of the knees happens with the shrug of the shoulders. Usually in Pilates, we don't want our shoulders up here, but it's good for them to be able to move up and down. We just don't want them to be stuck in either position. 
Now I'm going to add on to this. We're going to add a calf raise and an arm sweep. So knee bend and shoulder shrug. Exhale, straighten and unshrug. Lift your heels, reach the arms and tap the thumbs overhead. And everything comes down. We'll do that three more times. Calf raise, arms reach. Show you from the side for the last two. So you can always do more, hit pause on the video. That's always a great one to warm up if you're gonna go on a walk or a hike or a run, just get those legs moving and get some shoulder mobility. So moving on, we're gonna do rolling through the foot, rolling through the ankle. Starting, I'll show you this way, in parallel. We'll also do it in a wide Pilates V, hip external rotation. I'm gonna do hands on the hips. You can do whatever helps you, facilitates your balance. So from here, we're gonna add on to that knee bend. Bend the knees, stay relatively upright, and then lift your heels, doesn't have to be a stiletto Barbie foot, and then straighten through the knees, lower the heels, so four parts. Inhale, exhale, elevate your heels. Find your stability, straighten the knees, lower the heels. Two more this direction, flowing from position to position. And we reverse by initiating with the heel lift, bend the knees, lower the heels, and straighten the legs. Try not to stare at the screen the whole time. Keep your gaze fixed ahead of you. That will help stabilize you, make it a lot easier to balance here. One more, lift heels, bend knees, lower heels, straighten legs. Now I'm gonna face you. We're gonna go into a wide Pilates V. It's also called a sumo stance or wide external rotation at the hips. So your knees and toes are still tracking, knees over the center of the foot, we're not collapsing inward with the knees. I'm gonna go back to hands on the pelvis, make sure I'm not tipping forward or backward. My tailbone is shining down towards the ground, neutral pelvis that is. So from here, we're gonna do the same combo. Bend the knees, lift the heels a bit, straighten and lower. Breath to movement. Never holding our breath. One more this direction. And reverse, lift the heels. Bend the knees, ooh, I lost it. Lower the heels, straighten the legs. Still really pressing into the entirety of the ball of the foot, your whole width from big toe to pinky toe. All right, so from there, keep your position with the legs. These are called the teapot tips. Like your little teapot shortens out and you're about to tip over, but you don't. So I'm gonna keep my hands here on the hips again. Keep the space consistent between your feet. That's what I want you to think about. Legs stay straight. You're going to shift from one foot to the other, rebounding. So popping the foot off the ground and then softly landing, toe ball heel. But you're never bringing the feet closer together or wider apart. They stay the same distance as we tip from side to side. Our obliques, these abdominals here on the side, have to engage to keep us nice and stable upon our foot. Now, next time you're over to this side, pause, find your balance, maybe bring the arms out to help you balance, and little tiny circles the size of a grapefruit with that free leg. You can do pulses, whatever, get creative. You're standing on one leg, really good for you. We should aim to do this every day. Standing on one leg, that is. Reversing the direction. Now, find your balance and go to the other side. Tip, pause, and circle. Doesn't matter which way you start circling first, I'm circling backwards. Find your fixed point for your gaze and reverse that circling. Keep reaching along through that leg, drawing your abdominals in towards your spine like a little hug, and relax. You could do that same sequence in internal rotation. I'm just gonna demonstrate it, but you can do the same thing with your knees and toes more angled internally, spinning the whole femur bone, your leg bone internally, your thigh. And of course, you do the same thing with little pulses. You don't have to do circles, you can do little pulses of the leg. So just giving you that as another option. Um, you could do that for longer and hit pause. You can also do it in parallel. So you can get external rotation 
internal rotation and parallel for a little trifecta. Um, so moving on, we're going to do a little T rotation at the hip. So one leg is going to stay fixed, like a big tetherball pull. And then the other leg, my right leg, is going to step forward, making a perpendicular sign, or a T. So like the arch of the foot is right in line with the toes. And then I step back, making another T perpendicular sign. So we're just going to do a few. We're mobilizing our hips, moving the pelvis and this right leg around a fixed left leg. Now, a little stretch for the posterior hip capsule, the back of our hips. Keep that internal rotation. That's what we're in, internal rotation. Softly bend the knees, and this is kind of awkward, but you're gonna bend, lean forward with a flat back, getting that stretch into the back of the hips, the glutes. Stand up, step back in your T. We'll do that twice more, forward. Bend the knees a bit, hinge forward. Shoulders never go lower than the hips. It's like a deadlift in internal rotation at the hips. Just freeing up the back of that hip capsule. This is our last one here. And then other side. So my right leg is the fixed leg. I'm going to step forward, make that internal rotation and back. I'm not gonna explain as much on this side. Just focus on moving breathing, seeing if either side feels any tighter, more restricted. Now, internal rotation, you're in forward T, bend the knees softly and push your bum back, getting that stretch here for the posterior hip. Stand up, T behind, twice more, forward, lean, stand up and back, and once more. All right, so we're gonna come down to quadruped. Let's go through a little squat to come down to the mat. So squat, knees track forward, hips back, hands come out in front of me. I'm gonna come down to all fours, hands and knees, that is. So from here, just a simple little flow. Make sure that your fingers are spread and you're kind of gripping the mat so you can rework the intrinsic muscles on your hands and your wrists. So spreading those fingers, Keeping the elbow, shoulder, and wrist in alignment, knees right underneath your hip socket. And we'll start with just some mobility for the spine. So a slow cat and cow, focusing on spinal articulation, tucking your tailbone, rounding through the low back, through the waistline and mid back, through the upper back, head relaxes down. Now, start your wave of extension by reaching your tailbone skyward, arching the lumbar, mid back upper back, keep pressing down through those hands though, and head look slightly forward, tuck your tail, exhale all your air, pull the abdominals up towards the spine, towards the ceiling, now start with the tailbone, release, wave of extension follows through the rest of your spine, and tuck that tailbone. Now moving on, we're gonna do a little poodle tail. So you hike the left side of the hip, that means side bend a little bit towards the left, and then hike the right side of the hip up towards your lowest ribs. So we're doing a little shortening of the left side of the body here, lengthening of the right, and then vice versa. You're thinking about traveling your hip bone up towards your lowest rib, shortening that side of the body. And I didn't mention, I'm also looking towards that hip that is hiking getting a little neck mobility. Feels so good, we'll do one more each side. And then let's marry those two exercises together to make dancing cats. So we'll do a flexion of the spine extension, but between each of those positions, we'll add that side bend. So it'll look like this, tuck the tailbone, flex your spine, this is your cat. From here, side bend to the left, that's your hip hike. Extend the spine, look forward. Side bend to the right, tuck your tailbone under and round your back twice more in this direction. Side bend left, extension, side bend right, flexion once more. Breathing naturally and reverse. So from flexion, I'm gonna side bend right, 
wave into extension, side bend left, and flexion. Two more circles. Dancing cat. And then just sit back for a second, shake those wrists out. Just a little bit more work here in our all fours position before coming onto our back. So from all fours, we're just gonna do something called our sternum drop. Sternum is your breastbone. It's also called scapula push-up or serratus push-up. So from all fours, keep your arms straight. That's really important here. Just your shoulder blades are going to mobilize upon the rib cage. So on your inhale, and you're going to keep your flat back, so don't tuck the tailbone under, don't reach it excessively up, just think tailbone reaching long behind you, keeping your neutral pelvis and spine. So uh, inhale, your shoulder blades come towards each other like they're kissing at the spine. On your exhale, they widen broad away from each other, as wide as they can get. Inhale, they narrow, exhale, they widen. They kiss, exhale, they run away from each other. So imagine those shoulder blades are like slippery bars of soap, that's a lot of S's, sliding on the rib cage, sliding effortlessly towards each other and away from each other. Good exercise, really effective in um, waking up your serratus anterior. We're gonna hold the wide position. This is where the serratus anterior is really firing to keep your shoulder blade um, hugging tightly onto the rib cage, which is very supportive in any plank or push-up. We want to keep this strong position, we're pressing away from the ground. Now from here, I just want to do a very basic exercise called a hand opposite knee float. So take an inhale. On your exhale, draw the abdominals in without changing the position of your pelvis and spine, and float your right hand and left leg off the mat. Nothing else should change in your body. And then lower them down, take an inhale. Exhale, draw the abs in without changing the bony structures of your body, and then hover left hand and right leg. Test your stability here. One more each side. Inhale. Exhale, draw the abs in. Float right hand and left leg. Head, is, head in line with spine. I could do a better job of that right now. Inhale down, and exhale, float hand and knee. And all the way down. So from here, we're going to come onto our backs. There's a lot of other stuff you can do in quadruped, but I'm just demonstrating some of the basics today. So once you're on your back, we're going to practice what is called the pelvic tilt. So our pelvis, my hands are on it right now, the bottom of our torso here, is going to rock forward towards the thighs and rock back towards our rib cage and our head. So I'm going to just, you can have your arms beside you. I'll bring mine up so that you can easily see. I'm pressing into my feet. They are hip distance apart. And I'm just rocking my pelvis, tipping it forward and tipping it backwards, imprinting my lower back into the mat. Inhale, tip forward and exhale back. So you should feel an arch form under your lower back and then imprinting, stamping your lower back into the mat. Inhale, tipping towards the thigh bones. Exhale, tipping towards you. Pubic bone towards thighs. Pubic bone towards your rib cage. So you can do these for quite a while. It's really nice, a little massage for your lower back. And we're using them as a prep for bridging. So find your neutral position between the forward, the anterior tilt, and the backward, the posterior tilt. If you look up, you should have your pubic bone right on the same plane as your hip bones. You should feel those bony um, protrusions here. And if you make a little triangle, your pointer finger should be on the pubic bone and the heel of your hand should be on your hip bone. And that triangle should be on the same plane when you look at it. Pubic bone is not tipped up higher or lower of your hip bones. Then you can bring your head back down. And before we go into bridges, let's put the arms beside us, palms down and just practice a float of the left leg to tabletop, knee above hip, return the foot down gracefully, and then float the right leg up. As you're doing this alternating march, nothing in your pelvis or spine should react. So you should have a silent pelvis and silent spine, 
that are not reacting to the movement of the leg within the hip socket. Really important concept in Pilates and a lot of other movement practices is that disassociation. Can we move? This is a question you can ask yourself. Can you move your leg without moving the pelvis? So you're not having an elvis pelvis, letting it rock and roll around like what I just demonstrated. So keep that neutral spine, inhale, float the right leg to the tabletop. And exhale, abs draw in without moving the bony structures of the pelvis. Float the left leg to meet it in tabletop. Your legs are hip distance apart. From here, you're thinking, keep that pelvic positioning in neutral. And your lowest ribs, I kind of cut them from the side, the lowest ribs are pressing down into the mat. They're not flaring up towards the ceiling. I'm not arching my back. Press down through the arms. Take an inhale to prepare, and exhale, tap the right toes down. Inhale, float the leg up. Exhale, tap the left toes down. These are called toe taps, makes sense. Exhale, reach down, inhale up. You are maintaining 90 degrees at the knee the whole time. So that will make it more work than just going like this, tapping like that. You want to be controlled, exhale down, inhale up. One more each, pelvis is not rocking. And then bring both feet to the ground. We'll end with just a very basic bridge set. So take an inhale and exhale. This is an articulated bridge, rolling bridge. So keep your gaze up towards the ceiling and tuck your tailbone, press actively into the feet so much so that you start to imprint that spine or in that posterior tilt, and then lift your pelvis, roll up one vertebra at a time, peeling them off of the mat until you're no higher than your shoulder blades. This is our bridge. You're reaching through your kneecaps, lengthening the legs, nice diagonal line from knees to shoulders. And imagine you've got a little ball you're squeezing between those knees, so you can feel those inner thighs engage a little bit more. Take an inhale. And exhale, we slowly roll down, keeping the hips high, the tailbone tucked under as long as you can, as you let the rib cage slowly and gracefully melt down onto the mat. Go through the mid back, lower back, and finally you're back in that neutral pelvis. Take your inhale, we'll do that once more. Exhale, press into the feet, tuck your tailbone, Scoop the lower abdominals in and roll up sequentially, one vertebra at a time, holding it at the top, big breath in. And exhale, slowly get heavy through the rib cage, but keep the pelvis lifted as long as you can, melting your upper body, upper back onto the mat, middle back, lower back, and pelvis. And then the last one we'll do here is roll up hold your bridge from here we're going to keep the weight in the left foot and float the right leg to the tabletop we're doing our alternating march set that foot back down take an inhale and exhale press into the right foot as you float the left leg to the tabletop 90 degrees and switch so as we alternate back and forth we're trying to keep our pelvis pretty stable we're trying not to let it rotate or hike towards the hip or hiking the hip towards the ribs, We're trying to keep our waistline evenly long on both sides and the pelvis at the same level right to left. Think of pushing down through the right foot and lifting, pulling the left leg back towards you. Kind of like an archer, push and pull. One more each side. Last one here, this is our alternating bridge, alternating march in the bridge, that is. Both feet are down, take a big inhale, and exhale, soften your sternum, let your chest be heavy, melt it all the way down into that mat, hug your knees in towards your chest, and rock a little side to side. So very, very brief supine work today, laying on our back. Now we're gonna grab that Theraband. So there's one more thing we're going to do here on our back before ending with a little spinal mobility on our side. Take that Theraband onto your thighs, and this is going to wake up our abdominals, those obliques a little bit more. 
So you've got it above the knees, neutral pelvis as we practice. You can even curl up and make sure that that pubic bone is on the same plane as your hip bones. You're not tucking the tailbone, lifting your tailbone up above the mat. So you have that neutral pelvis, tiny little bit of space for the lower back, under the lower back. So lower ribs stay heavy. Once you're there, arms are beside you. Float your legs up to tabletop. Maintain hip distance apart for your starting position. Now from here, all you're gonna do is inhale to prepare. Small movement on your exhale, press that left leg out to the side without moving that stable right leg. That's your anchor. The right leg is your anchor for that theraband. Exhale, abduct, which means travel the left leg out to the side. Inhale back to starting position. As that left leg travels out to the left, make sure that you're staying absolutely heavy through the right side of the pelvis. You can even bring your hands onto your hips and make sure that you're not rocking to the left. It's just that left leg that's traveling out to the side. Let's do the other side. So left leg is your anchor. Exhale, right leg travels out. You might notice that one side feels a little easier than the other. And if you want to really bring that um, sensation internally to what's happening in your body, bring your left fingertips to the left side of the abdominals. And you should feel that the musculature underneath your fingertips tenses and retracts away from your fingers a bit as you travel the right leg out to the side. One more. And then last thing, your arms up towards the ceiling, palms facing each other. Let your shoulder blades be heavy into the mat. The back of the neck is nice and long. We're gonna do a lateral dead bug. So as the left leg goes out to the side, we're gonna do five of these, the right leg, the right arm travels out to a capital letter T. Inhale back to center. Exhale, open to the side. Right leg stays absolutely still. Pelvis is not moving. I believe this is five. Counting is not my forte. We'll say that was five. And then other sides be even. Exhale, travel the right leg and left arm out to the side. Inhale, home. Shoulder blades are melting into that mat. Two more. Last one. Back to center. Take that fair band off. Toss it to the side. And we'll end with a roller assisted open book stretch. Really wonderful for spinal mobility and shoulder mobility. And then what is called the pinwheel arms. So if you don't have a foam roller, what you will do is stack your legs. You're laying along the left side of your body. If you do not have the foam roller, you can stack your legs right on top of left. Um, 90 degree angle at the knees and the hips, or you can bring a yoga block or a small Pilates ball underneath that top knee. I'm going to take my foam roller underneath my leg, just like this. So it's knee is here. The foam roller is just a little bit further past the knee and I'm resting my lower leg on that roller. The left leg is outstretched long and I'm stacking my hips to begin. So then just let your head rest down here. You can always bring a towel, folded up towel or pillow for increasing your comfort for your neck. This top right arm is going to just rest on top of the bottom hand. Now on my inhale, this is the super great feel good part. You inhale and stretch, reaching past that bottom hand, getting a little inner thigh massage with that roller, bit of pelvic rotation. And on the exhale, this is called the open book for a reason. You're going to drag the elbow back, shoulder blade towards the spine, and open your book. Open that arm to the right, allowing your spine to rotate towards the right and your head to follow. Inhale to come back. Bend up the elbow, reaching past that bottom hand, bottom arm. Big breath in. Whatever feels good, rolling pretty far out to the side or just a little bit. And then exhale. Slide that arm past you. You want to stop with the hips stacked one on top of the other. Keep pressing that top leg down into the foam roller. So that might mean you can't open that right arm all the way to the side. That's totally fine. You are limited by how much, um, by the ability to keep that right leg pressing into the roller. 
head follows that arm, you're looking to the right if that feels good, otherwise looking up towards the ceiling. And we'll do that one more time, bending the arm to come back, reaching past the bottom arm, big, big breath in. Exhale, open your book. Thoracic rotation, rotation through the upper spine, stability through the lower spine. Now take your left hand, high five the ceiling. Keep that arm straight, really reach actively towards the sky as you simultaneously press that right leg into the foam roller. Waking up our obliques a little bit more, deepening this twist. And we'll reset for our pinwheels before going to the other side. So pinwheel, it's a big arm circle. You start the same way by inhaling and reaching past the bottom hand and then reaching up overhead, allowing your gaze to follow that moving arm, sweeping out to the side, really big reach and completing your circle. So inhale to begin, stretch forward and up, gaze follows that moving, reaching arm. I go through my thoracic rotation, complete the circle, we'll do one more for a total of three. I actually like to inhale as I'm reaching up. We think about lifting the rib cage up and out of the pelvis, stretching through that arm, back to center, and then we'll do the other side. So coming on up, swinging those legs around to side two, taking a moment to set up. You might have a really good setup here. So you have that knee. In line with the hip, the bottom leg is straight, hips are stacked to begin. Your arm is nice and long, set up your pillow if you have it, or that towel, otherwise you're here. Inhale, reach bottom arm or top arm past the bottom arm. Inhale, let the pelvis rotate. Exhale, slide that arm back, keep your hips stacked, bend that elbow, reach back into your stretch. Your gaze, your neck can rotate to the left as well, or you can stay looking up towards the ceiling. And then bend that arm, travel it back to the starting position. Big inhale and reach. And exhale, open your book. Keep pressing down with that left leg into your foam roller. If you need to adjust it like I am, you can. I want to be comfy. Looking to the left or up towards the sky. Closing your book, reaching past that bottom arm. Last one here. And then opening, big yawn. Oh, maybe this will even trigger a yawn. It often does for me. Looking to the left, taking that right arm, reaching it, high-fiving the ceiling and actively pressing down in opposition with the left leg into your foam roller. One more big breath in. Fully exhaling. Bring the bottom arm down, top arm comes back. And then we do pinwheel arms. Inhale, reach past that bottom palm, reach up to up overhead. Big lift of the rib cage up and out of the hips. Circle to the side and restarting twice more. Big pinwheel, big circle. Moving nice and slowly for these. No need to go fast when you're working on shoulder and spine mobility. Last pinwheel. Big inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Coming all the way back. Propping yourself up with your hands. Let's get that roller out of the way. And that was it. That was our little foundational flow. Ended up being a little bit longer than I expected. So it's about, uh, about 36 minutes without the talking at the beginning. So repeat this flow. Let me know if you have any questions. There's a lot of things that we can build upon the exercises in this sequence. So I'll make a second video that will expand upon what we did here, just adding on to some of the foundations and giving you a fun little challenge and but nothing too hard, just going through the basics, but adding just a little bit more intensity. All right, I hope that you enjoy this class.